The kingdom is in grave danger. Powerful enemies are conspiring to resurrect the vile and powerful unhallowed that your party has just slain. Now you, the mighty adventurers of the land, must visit these summoning locations and defeat the hordes of creatures behind this evil plot. In the game, set a watch. One to four adventurers are going to be attempting to defeat the unhallowed along with a bunch of horrendous monsters. It is a cooperative game that takes about 45 minutes to play and you're going to be utilizing everything you have including special abilities that you can interchange as well as dice depending on the characters that you are using to fight the monsters. As the game progresses it gets more difficult and the locations change but players are able to head to camp if they want and if they do so they can utilize the help of the camp's effects on their players who are currently away from camp fighting the monsters. Each player will get a certain amount of times to go to the camp or fight monsters depending on what they're doing and if they can defeat all the monsters including the Unhallowed by the time the game ends they will win however it's very likely they will instead die thusly ending their watch in the game. So here we have the game set a watch and all the components you'll be getting in the game. First thing to talk about is what you're getting as far as dice go and tokens. There's three different tokens. These are the fire tokens here that symbolize how high the fire is in the watch. You also have the different die for the different characters in the game and depending on the characters you choose are whether you'll be using six sided or eight sided die. You're also going to be getting these uh, tokens which are basically rested tokens for your characters that signify how many times you can go to camp. These are all your different character abilities. There's eight different characters in the game and they all have their own unique abilities that they can switch throughout the game. These are summon cards. You'll be putting them in the deck uh, for the monsters and the more you have in there the more difficult they are because that will represent how many of these unhallowed cards they are. These are the most powerful monsters you have to defeat and watch out for in the game. This whole deck here represents all the different monsters and they all have different types as well as their health and their abilities as well as taking a look at the locations here. All of these locations here represent different things that can happen throughout each of the rounds and what you'll be doing and how it's going to go down. This over here is the rule book of the game and also of course the Seta Watch Deluxe Edition uh, box which is awesome because it not only comes with this nice flippy thing but you'll be utilizing this entire box throughout the game whether it be simply uh, taking oh we have the character boards in here as well uh, whether it be using unused locations here putting the horde in here having the locations out here as well as this is the camp space which will control where the fire is going to be at and how strong the fire is or of course choosing to lay your die down on the either chop firewood scout ahead check map equip or heal locations throughout the game this is all the stuff you'll be getting in the game including all of these awesome character boards here and a quick reference on each of the boards so when you're playing with four players you can simply use this and this and it works out just fine all right let's tell you how to play it so back to set a watch here. I went ahead and set it up for four players, but it can play the same with one to four because everyone's always going to have four players total in this game. If you're playing one, you get four. If you're playing two, each player gets two. You get the idea. Not only that, but you get your characters and then you get to choose three of the five different abilities after you've chosen the three of the five. Just set the other two aside. You'll probably be using them later. These will count for your abilities and also your health throughout the game. So you got to be careful. Not only that, but you also have special abilities on each of these uh, cards here and depending on what it says like for instance here if you're camping you get to do a specific ability here it'll tell you what phase you're going to be doing stuff in uh, to set up the monster deck you're going to pick a number of summon cards and put in the deck based on the difficulty one two three or four four being the most difficult then you're going to remove the rest of the summon cards uh, you're also going to take 30 monsters and shuffle them up in a deck and make it right 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 there basically the rest of the monsters you won't be using just go ahead and set them aside remove from the game along with the summoning cards over here are a bunch of the unhallowed monsters. You're just going to set, have a deck of these guys set aside for whenever you draw a summon card. You're going to set uh, a amount of fire equal to 8 if you would like, or you can choose to roll a d8, and based on what you roll is where you can set it. Uh, for ease of play, I'm going to make it go here at 8. And of course, uh, at 1, you're going to get 1 flame. At 2, you're going to get 2 flames. And at 3 over here, you'll gain 3 flames based on the amount of fire or heat you have, which will also help you read reveal the amount of monsters throughout the game. So what's going to happen is you're then going to take eight locations. One of them is going to be a ending location.
edition, which looks like this. It has a little symbol like that on it. The catacombs is one of them. And the rest of them uh, are going to be on top. So there's nine total, one ending and then eight other ones at random. The rest of them will go here in the unused location in the actual box of the game. Flip over one and put it here. Normally, uh, for each location, you're going to have a minus or a plus to fire or maybe a zero, in which case you'll move the fire tracker down or up based on that symbol there. And then, of course, this is the amount of monsters you'll be fighting throughout this specific uh, turn or round. The Snowy Pass says that you place the lowest die rolled on this card and it can't be used again this round. After you've gone ahead and uh, revealed the location, you're going to all roll dice. I went ahead and just rolled them for all these characters here. You cannot see the other two characters, but just assume that they have their abilities on their sheets there, along with their special abilities. After you do that, you're going to pick a person to rest in camp. These are the camp tokens over here. And uh, based on the people who have rolled the lowest, probably the ones you're going to want to send to camp first. So for instance, this dwarf over here rolled a one, a one, and a three, even though he had eight-sided die. So he's actually going to venture off into camp. He'll have these die here to where he's going to be able to allocate them on the board here. So we'll be taking the to take a camp action. This symbol here means a times one, which means you went to there once, and then a second time means you go to camp twice. Everybody can only go to camp twice throughout the nine rounds of the game, except for the ninth round where anybody or nobody can go to the camp. Okay, so now we've got our die here, and he's gonna take his camp actions, and there's quite a few of them. If you roll doubles, you can go ahead and place those doubles over here and do two of the three abilities, whether it be seal, bolster, or vanquish. Vanquish removes a character from the horde. Bolster takes a character from the, a monster from the graveyard and puts in the bottom of the deck. And Seal um, is going to let you, or sorry, Seal will do that, and then Bolster lets every player roll their lowest die if they want, want, you know, so he could roll his two, he could roll his three, and he could roll his three. Otherwise, you don't have to use those. Instead, you've got a heal over here. If he rolled a six, he could heal his character once. Whenever you take damage, you're going to flip over one of your abilities, and it becomes useless. And so you can actually flip over one of your abilities, which is very, very useful throughout the game. Uh, another thing you do is equip, which means you can switch out your abilities for your other abilities throughout the game. Checking your map, which allows you to look at this map here and one of the unused, pick one that you like and put the other one on the bottom of the unused map, and then put the other one on top here. So that way you can change how the maps are going to uh, go throughout the game. You've got Scout Ahead, so if you wanted to, you could place one there and then one here. Let you look at the monsters, choose one, put on top, put the other one on the bottom kind of thing. And you can only do that if your die go in the, uh, from uh, descending to ascending order. One, three, and then four, five, or six. However, this is a one, so we can only do it twice. Another thing you could finally do is chop firewood. You can do it up to three times. For every time you chop firewood, you go up two spaces. And as you go up the spaces, you can change the little fire symbols. They're not really used, used for anything other than that, so having extra ones is just for fun. After you've gone ahead and had somebody go to camp, then you're going to do the ta uh, do the uh, the next phase, which is going to be the combat phase. Uh, you're going to flip over based on the camp action, the, the, the camp here, we've got three here, flip over three guys here, and do any of their abilities that pop up. One's an ongoing, one is a first position, and this one here is when it's defeated. So first position means first position, which is this monster here. So if this monster gets defeated, this monster will be in the first position and he'll get to activate his ability. Ongoing says the zombie horde's health is always combined with the creature card on the top of the graveyard. There's no creature on the top of the graveyard, so that's irrelevant right now. There is, of course, his damage at the end of the round and his health. Utilizing your die in any order you want, you can choose to start damaging monsters throughout the game. Uh, certain characters will have the ability to flip over and do certain things to change the die. Uh, one of the characters, which I believe is the dwarf, can actually reduce the amount of... Uh, for every, if he does three damage and there's two health on the monster, he'll get one back. There's that kind of abilities on the characters. However, we have a seven here, so we would just do this and that, and that would destroy that monster. These would get removed, and this monster would go to the graveyard. If so, that happened, the next monster here uh, is going to be in first position. Exhaust two adventure cards, uh, minus three. So you could, we'd actually lose three... Uh, you, you would lose three fire if you wanted to do that, so maybe killing the, the zombie is not the best thing to do. However, if you kill this Ember Drake, he's got 11 health, and then the zombie's health is going to be combined with the creature card on the top of the graveyard, which could be this guy here. So it's it's really tricky as to what you kind of want to do throughout this game. So if we did this, we would suffer this uh, negative effect, and then we try and deal with that monster, maybe a six and a five. So we can kill this guy here, and this guy would go as well. 
And of course, whenever you kill a monster in the lineup, you're going to be able to look at the next monsters based on this track here. So this is a three, so we could look at the next three always. Um, and then of course we have the first position here. So we, we want to kill this guy first before this guy. And ongoing, the giant's house is always combined with the creature behind it. Uh, reveal the creature if it's necessary. So it is, put this over, reveal. Still the highest available die uh, to become this card's value, uh, extra health. So he gets this eight here, now it's a nine. Wow, that's no good. Okay, so what do we have to do here? We've got a six here, so we can, we can nuke this guy here. It's probably very important to do because if he goes in the first position we'll lose our fire track and these will move up here this guy we kind of want to deal with this guy here for nine but we only have enough for seven damage which is unfortunate because that's not enough to kill any of these guys now that being said though there are abilities we could have used uh, on our characters here that could have benefited us in some way throughout the game but i'm just giving the basic idea so if we couldn't defeat any of these monsters at all they are going to do damage to us one two three and four damage that's a ton of damage but we have to be flipping over these guys here if we flip over all of our uh, all of our characters and we're all empty we're going to lose the game Game. It's a really quick way and easy way to lose the game. And these monsters will actually go all in the horde, which is going to be used for the last round. After that happens, you're going to have the guy return to from camp. Everybody's going to continue rolling the die, flipping out monsters depending on the location. This is a new one, so this is going to be seven monsters. Three, four, five, and six, and seven. And of course, if you ever hit a summoning card like this one right here, you're then going to summon a monster from the unhallowed deck, and it'll do something nasty. Place this card card in all revealed forest creatures, including the ones that are tamed, into the horde unless it's the final round. So that can be really nasty if that occurs. And then you're going to continue playing like that. You're going to go try and go through all of the locations in the deck and the final one here. And if you can survive to the very end, you're going to be the winner. If not, you're done for and you couldn't watch the location well enough and all your characters are, are kaput. So that's the basic idea of the game. Set a watch. Let's talk about it. So a couple caveats and a couple extra little interesting aspects to the rules. We didn't talk a lot about the character abilities, which are very important to the game. In fact, probably the most important things in the game. Um, and we also didn't talk about how the heal works. Heal, you can heal pretty much anybody in the game. At the start of the game, uh, I, I told you to pick three of the five abilities, which is true. But when you start them off on the board, one is flipped face down. So you only have two, tech, two health to use. If they're face down, they can't use them as an ability. But when you go to camp, you always heal one. So it's a free, free heal there but the extra heal could heal yourself or somebody else as well. You're gonna wanna have all these guys face up if possible. Um, so let's talk about just one of the characters, which is going to be the Bard here. The Bard, first of all, has this special ability, which says when he's at camp, you can swap one of your abilities with one from another uh, from another non uh, from another adventure not in the game. If you swap out an exhausted power, the new one comes in exhausted, obviously. Uh, of course, he also has five abilities of his own. One that lets him reveal a creature and increase the firewood by its listed damage. So he reveals a creature, it says three as far as damage, you get three firewood. Confuse a creature, put a revealed creature into the horde. If it's a human, deal its, dam its health as damage to the next creature revealed, which is great except for the fact that at the end of the game you have to deal with the monster that you revealed. Ballad of Power says adventurers may pip down their die, so from five to four, uh, down the die placed here to pip up their die. So whenever you play an ability, you're going to put a die on one of these cards here. That's basically an action you're going to be getting as opposed to doing damage. So, uh, yeah, place here to pip up their die as long as the die has not been decreased down to zero. Exhaust this card instead of die to its maximum value. Wow, that's really, really useful. Song of Harm, it's a passive, which means you can just have it forever. The bard can directly attack any creature, uh, reveal, uh, any revealed creature with his die. Wow, that's really powerful. And the reason why is because you can't hit every single creature unless you have, uh, you have to have range, which lets you do a certain amount of hits depending on how far away the creatures are. And if you're, of course, melee, you have to hit the guy right in front. So you have to kind of determine where you're going to be attacking, how you're going to be attacking. And then harmonize. Double the damage another player does to a target with direct attacks for the duration of the round. That's, that can be very good, especially if you roll low and you can't go to camp because somebody else rolled low. Anyway, that's the basic idea of the game. Like I said, there's some range involved as to who you can hit and how you can hit. There's some healing involved and a ton of different character abilities and a ton of different characters. And of course, the wonderful player quick reference chart on the back of each of these characters. So that way, when you pick four, you're going to have four for everybody to look at. And it gives you a full-on list of everything you need to know about the game. What do I think about this game? It's awesome. This game is really, really, really good. If you like cooperative games, this is definitely one you should check out because it's very very difficult but as you play the game you realize your mistakes and they are hard lessons learned you want to play again after you lose because you're probably going to lose this game the first time because you're not going to realize your abilities are very important and how you utilize them and where and when is really really important i imagine that's probably a best character team like a dream team to use of the eight characters we just picked a couple of them at random the first time and a couple other ones at random the second time and uh 
as we played, we got better and better understanding how they function and how they worked, when you're going to want to change the maps and how you're going to want to change the monsters. Do you want to add too many to the horde to make the end of the game more difficult, etc., etc. It is a heart-pounding game because as you go through the different waves of monsters, you start feeling more and more hopeless until suddenly you roll that one great die roll from everybody in one round and bam, you're back up again and you're fighting, but you still don't have enough health and you have to send at least one person to camp, but maybe you don't want to send anybody or maybe you want to send more than one person it's oh it's it's stressful and i can see how that can come across too some people are gonna be like this is too stressful for me it's too uh it's too like challenging and i can see that as being a flaw in the game but for me that's a huge plus i really enjoyed this game the artwork is spectacular i personally like the artwork on the uh on the little folder of, of the of the game box and not really on the front but actually as i continue playing throughout the game i like pretty much all of it except for that little cover art there it's 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 okay um the monsters that you deal with from the summoned cards here these guys on hollowed can be devastatingly difficult and you want to avoid having to have them come out because every time you go through the monster deck you can have to shuffle it again and go for it again and that can be very very painful as well utilizing characters that allow you to remove creatures from the game is so important some of these monsters are nasty all other creatures are too great too greater in health just and he's a 311 uh how about this wyvern rider reveal all wyverns in the graveyard are placed behind the rider in line Oh my gosh. Goblin Chief, reveal and add all goblins from the creature and graveyard deck to the front of the line. The creature and the graveyard deck. On Hollows, you do not want to deal with them. Uh, but overall, the game is fun. If you like cooperative games, like I said, if you enjoyed this kind of die rolling game, dice allocation, it's going to be one for you. If you don't get like games that are a little too difficult or maybe even too complex, it is a medium to complex game. Not for how it is played. How it is played is very simple. But what you need to do on your turn and how you're going to allocate die and when you're going to allocate allocate die is what's very very important and interesting in this game overall i really really enjoyed set a watch by rock manor games i've liked all of their stuff this is my favorite one above all else in comparison to their games that i just completely am i'm enthralled with really well well done this gets my seal of approval but jing check it out <laughs>